Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as the session chair just indicated, my name is Sloan Whiteley, and I'm with um, the organization Aviva. And we actually have a booth here today, so hopefully um, you'll find the presentation insightful and um, like to inquire more about our products. So the focus of today's presentation is going to be presenting an integration, integrated solution framework based on the requirements specified in the forthcoming ISO 55000 standard series for an integrated asset management system. So in order to address this topic in further detail, today's discussion is going to focus on, first of all, presenting several actual plant incidents with the objective of identifying lessons learned. Whoops. Then we'll talk about the key operational integrity management challenges based on actual study data. And then we'll round out the discussion with a presentation of best practice recommendations aligned to this new ISO 55000 standard series and a solutions-based approach for putting those recommendations into practice. So in order to set the context for today's discussion, it's helpful to start off by first identifying several actual um, plant incidents spanning multiple industry domains. First, this includes a power plant chemical fire, which resulted in the trapping and killing of five workers performing maintenance work in a confined space. Then we have a mining explosion, which resulted from application of mixing motor blades to solidified PET-N, which is highly volatile unless it is, it is stored wet. This in turn resulted in a secondary explosion in a nearby storage facility, which also happened to be uh, storing explosive materials. Then we have a refinery explosion which resulted in ignition, ignition of a leaking sulfuric acid tank by a welding spark. And lastly, a chemical plant explosion which resulted from rupture of a distillation column. Based on the post-incident investigations, these um, investigations revealed several key causes. These included inadequate maintenance and work planning, untrained workers, improper proximity and localization of hazardous proper, uh, processes, inadequate corrosion and leak detection mechanisms, as well as non-formalization of management of change processes and lack of pre-startup safety reviews. So each of these causes reveals some key lessons learned. First of all, there's a need for formal worker training capabilities to be in place, as well as simulation of hazardous processes, uh, proper risk analysis capabilities, such as risk-based inspection and risk-based assessment, as well as a formal hot work permit system for non-routine work. These are just a few examples of the key lessons learned. Despite broad public awareness of each of these incidents, as well as the lessons learned, the fact that they span multiple industry domains is a clear indication that no industry vertical has been entirely effective in putting the right measures and checks and balances in place to ensure that history doesn't repeat itself time and time again. 
If we now focus on the challenges from a process safety management and process safety information perspective, we see that OSHA, for example, mandates several key things. Now, it's my understanding that um, the OSHA guidelines in the context of PSM are not mandatory here in India. However, many organizations are making a move to become compliant as part of best practice programs. So it's still relevant to discuss the OSHA requirements in this forum today. So what the appendix um, that you see listed here specifies is that there must be formal process design and technology review capabilities, um, also formal documentation of operations and maintenance activities and procedures, emergency preparedness plans and procedures, as well as formalized training programs and identification of all process hazard uh, process-related hazards via process hazards analysis. In order to execute any of these processes and activities, it requires accurate and complete process safety information. However, we need to consider several key challenges and think about the way that these challenges can be addressed in the context of process safety information. First of all is the sheer broad spectrum of the actual information sources and information types that need to be taken into account. These include things such as PNIDs, 3D models, and HAZOP related documentation. Also, there's a common challenge of inaccurate and incomplete information at both the time of handover of the information from the EPC to the owner operator, as well as key challenges in terms of providing complete and accurate information at the time of shift handover. Inaccurate and incomplete information at the time of shift handover is a leading cause of numerous incidents. Also, there needs to be um, consideration and mechanisms in place to ensure that the operational and in-plant changes throughout the entire operational life cycle are reflected in the as-built documentation, as well as capabilities for providing uh, visibility into all of the changes that have made to the as-built information. The organization also has to deal with the long information life cycle and regulatory retention requirements as well as frequently changing and ever more stringent regulatory requirements. Back in 2011, Aviva commissioned a third party study led by the Robert Gordon University based out of um, Aberdeen, Scotland. And part of this study involved surveying over 200 leading owner operators across multiple industry domains to identify their perspectives on the top operations integrity management challenges. This survey revealed that the top operations integrity management challenges include things such as anticipating human behaviors in abnormal situations, management of change, lack of time and funds to train resources, as well as variations in internal standards and operating procedures, deficiencies in the operating procedures, as well as um, not having the right tools in place to carry out effective and adequate inspection and maintenance activities. 
If we talk about the key challenges from an operational life cycle perspective, the challenges are a direct result of, first of all, the sheer number of processes, which include things such as production, supply chain management, um, management of vendors and subcontractors, as well as working with and complying with the requirements set out by the various regulatory authority bodies. There are also key uh, information dependencies and information flows that must be taken into consideration, as well as ensuring that the information that is required by each of these processes remains accurate, up-to-date, and well-coordinated. And last but not least, we need to talk about the key challenges from a training and resource competency development perspective. Numerous studies have indicated that traditional classroom-based approaches are not effective in developing resource competency. Also, there's a need for organizational knowledge retention over the long plant life cycle because obviously there's going to be numerous generations of workers that are coming in and out during that period. The next generation under 25 workforce is demanding new approaches and capabilities for training such as virtual reality based simulation which we'll be discussing more later in this presentation. Effective process hazard analysis requires extensive process knowledge and there must be a means for skills development for infrequently performed activities which are generally the most hazardous. So how can an organization effectively address and overcome each of these challenges and begin working towards achieving excellence in operations integrity management. Well, an ideal framework is provided by this forthcoming ISO 55000 standard series for an integrated asset management system. The standard series is further broken down into three parts. The first part, ISO 55000, provides an overview of the actual topic of asset management and the definitions to be used. Secondly, uh, 50001 provides the actual requirements for the integrated asset management system. And lastly, ISO 55002 provides the approach for implementation of this system. If we think about the requirements from a solutions-based perspective, uh, it's helpful to discuss the requirements in the context of six elements. These elements include the organization and people enablers, the asset knowledge enablers, as well as risk and review, all of which support the central processes of asset management strategy and planning, decision making, and the asset life cycle delivery activities. In terms of the requisite processes, these include things such as asset management planning, decision making, the technical standards and reliability analysis capabilities, and then from a knowledge enablement perspective, we have the asset information strategy, standards, and systems. In the people context are contract and supplier management and competency and behavior development. And then last but not least, in the risk and review category, we have criticality analysis, including risk-based inspection and analysis, as well as formal information change management and management of change. Now we get to the actual solution scope. 
to understand the required solution scope to be compliant with the standard. It's helpful to look at this figure developed by the Institute of Asset Management, who is actually spearheading the standards development process. The figure indicates that the solution scope encompasses three components, including the asset management system component, the training and competency component, as well as an underlying asset information backbone. When these three things are fully integrated and in place, Perfor operational performance improves and re residual risks are reduced, as indicated by the dark green area on the figure. Now, if we think about um, these capabilities in the context of Aviva product scope, we see that the Aviva Workmate Enterprise Asset Management System fulfills the role of the asset management system. In the context of training and competency, this is fulfilled by the Aviva Visualization Platform, otherwise known as AVP, and then the asset information backbone role and capabilities are fulfilled by AvivaNet, providing the concept of a digital information hub. Now let's talk specifically about asset information. Three things are required in this context. These include integrated information storage, providing a complete set of digital plant records, integrated digital systems and integration of information from the individual source systems, which include things such as the DCS system, engineering and design tools, and even um, a document management system where you may be storing uh, vendor documentation and equipment specifications. Also, information delivery standards and policies need to be in place to ensure that the as designed and an as modified data remains consistent and accurate throughout the entire life cycle. And then information management processes need to be integrated into the business processes to, they support. Once each of these things are in place, the asset information will become rapidly accessible, complete, correct, consistent, and trusted. From a process safety information management perspective, this wish list, if you will, provides additional requirements, which include the ability to export information into standard formats, such as Microsoft Word, Excel, and plain text. There needs to be a rapid and easy means to find the data and information, which is preferably web-based, another capability provided by AvivaNet. Users need to have access to view and interact and collaborate on the information from multiple data, data sources. They need to view, be able to view the information dependencies as well as ensure the information is valid. So one of the quotes that was presented in the intelligent manu uh, manufacturing presentation earlier this afternoon is the need for end-to-end -end data and information connectivity across the plant floor, uh, plant floor, as well as transformation of all of this data and information into actionable information to support decision-making processes. This is precisely what is provided by the asset information backbone, as you see indicated in this schematic here. In order to get the information from each of the individual source systems, um, Aviva provides what we call gateways. Now the gateways can be thought of as connectors or APIs, but they also provide a lot more. What they do 
is they go into the source systems, extract the relevant information, and then based on individual objects which are referenced by unique tag identifiers, they associate the information from all of the source systems where those individual tagged objects are referenced. Then the gateways publish this information to the web-based portal such that it is accessible to all the various stakeholders, both internally and externally, in support of the relevant processes. What you see here is an actual screenshot from the AvivaNet application and this is the web-based user interface. It's divided into three main parts, um, including the Enterprise Explorer, where the users perform both simple and advanced searches based on any information criteria that is known. The search results are then returned in the Content Explorer pane, which you see on the lower left-hand side, where it's broken down into different information categories, including things such as 3D models, vendor specifications, arrangement drawings, um, and isometrics. Then the user selects the specific piece of information they wish to view, a 3D model, for example, and that is then displayed in what we call the content viewer. So earlier we talked about the uh, addition of intelligence and hot spotting to the information. So what that means is from this content viewer, the user can click on any object that is referenced in that record, um, the 3D model in this case, and then of Evenet will automatically retrieve all of the information corresponding to that individual object such that the user can access it immediately as well as understand all of the information dependencies and associations. This is fundamentally critical to supporting effective management of change and safe operations. Next, we need to talk about enterprise asset management. Well, all industry-leading enterprise asset management systems encompass capabilities for financial integration or have built-in financial management capabilities, technical information and materials master data management, support for the procurement life cycle, materials management, as well as maintenance management. But in maintenance management, we need to talk about one key weakness that many of these enterprise asset management solutions have. And this is in the context of control of work. Control of work encompasses both safe job analysis and work permit management. So let's talk a little bit more about control of work. Now what you see here is just a very high level overview of the control of work process. Once um, an individual um, maintenance activity is identified, a work order is created in the maintenance management system. Once the work order has been created, the next step is to determine if that job is in fact required. If it is, then all of the hazards associated with execution of that maintenance job need to be identified. This requires a broad set of process safety information, including the standard operating procedures, PNIDs, 3D models, and equipment specifications, just to name a few. All of this information is provided by the integrated asset information backbone or of Evenet, which feeds into the control of work module of the enterprise asset management system, Workmate, 
in the scope of this discussion. Once all of the hazards have been adequately identified, next a plan needs to be formulated to execute the work itself. Once the plan has been formulated, next um, the work permit management process com commences, which involves creation of a work permit for actual authorization of the work to take place. But before the work can be authorized, we need to ensure that the workers who are going to be doing the work understand and are well cognizant of all of the relevant standard operating procedures as well as the processes that will take place. This is accomplished by the integrated training component or Aviva visualization platform. Now that we have full assurance that our workers are fully trained, the work can be authorized, executed, and the job order can be closed out in the maintenance management module of the enterprise asset management system. So why are we putting so much emphasis on control of work? Well, this is because inadequate control of work is almost always associated with plant incidents and resulting injuries and even loss of life. In terms of the actual capabilities or functionality that the system must provide for safe job analysis, these include capabilities for systematic review of risk factors, factors prior to commencing the work, as well as capabilities for creation of individual tasks and responsibility assignments, provision of capabilities for customizable, for creating customizable checklists to ensure that all of the risks are um, addressed. We also need to have electronic documentation of the risk assessment meetings and action items and electronic document approval capabilities. From a work permit management perspective, the solution capabilities must include visualization of permits across the entire facility as well as capabilities for plotting where the actual work's going to be performed in the context of where the hazardous processes are located and evacuation routes in the event that something should go wrong. So the evacuation routes are indicated by those yellow lines in the figure you see in the upper right hand side of the screen. And there needs to be capabilities for electronic activation and deactivation of work permits and isolation per, uh, certificates as well as a means for ensuring the work permits adhere to the defined approval process. In this context, the key benefit is improved regulatory compliance and safety. Lastly, we need to talk about capabilities that are required in the context of training. These include the need for realistic training for emergency situations, provision of a means um, to practice infrequently performed tasks and hazardous processes, capabilities for simulation of real world conditions in the actual training exercises themselves, anticipation of how people are going to react and perform when they're carrying out these necessary activities and in emergency situations, uh, as well as appealing to the next generation workforce. So from a solutions capability perspective, the key features and capabilities that must be provided include fully interactive real world environments where multiple workers can perform and practice predefined tasks, as well as provision of relevant workflows for training, collaboration, planning, and operations. 
Once these capabilities in place are in place, the organization will realize um, the workers have increased situational awareness and are more familiar with the facility itself. Capabilities also must be provided for sequencing of individual um, tasks within an animated 3D environment in order to demonstrate the progress of a particular process or production schedule. In this context, the key benefit benefits are improved stakeholder comprehension, communication, and speed to proficiency. And last but not least, the solution must provide applications for engineers, which include custom visualization tools offering an immersive experience of a 3D model-based environment with embedded links to the information provided by the asset information backbone. In this context, benefits are increased safety, enhanced capabilities for remote assets, surveillance and troubleshooting, as well as improved collaboration for solving actual um, maintenance issues. This is an, uh, a screenshot taken from the Aviva visualization platform application. And what it shows is the solutions um, capabilities for providing these 3D simulated environments, which can include multiple avatars representing both human and physical objects. So including an, um, like an operating or an operational piece of equipment or something such a, down to even some, something such as a forklift. Now, within this 3D simulated environment, we can embed the AvivaNet uh, information portal, which provides access to the asset information backbone, such that as the users are going through these actual training exercises and processes that they're going to be performing, they can literally walk up to this embedded information portal and access all of the information relevant to that process. So they can pull up a 3D model or um, HAZOP documentation or a standard operating procedure. This is an extremely important and innovative new capability that we can provide. What you see in this screenshot here is um, another example from Aviva Visualization Platform um, providing an overview of a lockout tagout scenario co corresponding to shutdown of um, several condenser fans for maintenance. So as the user is going through this process, they're provided with explicit information uh, regarding where the actual switches that need to be um, turned off are located in the plant and guides them to walk to that actual location and also provides them with access to the actual written procedures themselves for carrying out the lockout tagout activities. So let's quickly recap the key benefits provided by the individual solution components. In the context of asset and maintenance management, the organization will have improved emergency preparedness capabilities, improved compliance with asset information standards, as well as integration of control of work into the maintenance activities themselves, as well as improved incidence response rates. From a training and competency development perspective, 
There will be improved assurance that resources are competent in all of the tasks that they are performing, assurance that workers fully understand the standard operating procedures and execute the tasks accordingly, as well as, and most importantly, reduce number and frequency of injuries and incidents. Once again, all of this is underpinned by that asset information backbone, which is mandated um, and required in the scope of the ISO 55000 standard. The organization, once they have these three integrated solution components in place, will realize excellence in operations, integrity management, and comply with the requirements of the ISO 55000 standard series. So anyone from Aviva who's here today and tomorrow as well would enjoy the opportunity to further explain the capabilities of each of the products discussed today as well as our other solutions and I also look forward to addressing any questions you may have regu uh, regarding the solution scope or the forthcoming standard during the Q&A session later this afternoon. Thank you very much.